All right, look out your window. If you see snow, you might want to fast forward to that time right there because I know at least one of my six viewers who will not be happy with this video because it starts in the middle of February. And today, we have a high of 86 degrees. All right, so here's our sound trailer. It's a six by 12 cargo trailer. It's um, single axle, not nearly as stout as what I pretended it was. Every time it left the house, it had about 3,000 pounds worth of JBL speakers and crown amplifiers. And somehow or another, I fit it all into this trailer. I mean, we're talking about a massive amount of equipment that went in there. So, this is what we're working with. We need to retrofit this. So at the beginning of this year, I made reference to the idea that we were gonna turn this sound trailer into a mobile food dispensing vehicle as the state of Florida calls it. Basically a food truck or a food trailer. So a little bit of backstory on that. At that time, we had applied for a contract with the State of Florida Parks and Recreation Service to provide a food vending service at our local state park. We didn't get the contract, but at the time, we were on a tight schedule to get this done by the middle of March. Obviously, that did not happen because we didn't get the contract. But my wife decided we're still going to build this thing and I've got it parked right here so that I could build it. A week or two ago, we started having consecutive days of upper 70s, low 80s temperatures, which told me I need to get the hot tub up and going, get everything cleaned up out here, get ready for hot tub season, springtime because obviously it's coming quicker than I really expected it to happen. I also realized that this trailer's gotta be done. And I'll be honest, I've met me, and if I move this trailer out of the way so that I could work on the hot tub which sits right behind it, this trailer's never gonna get done. So, knowing me, I probably need to go ahead and at least take care of the first step on this sound trailer food truck before we move forward on the hot tub and the other projects I've got planned around here. So here's the deal. According to my driver's license, I'm six foot one. And according to my tape measure, that trailer right there is about half inch shy of six foot from floor to metal piece I can bang my head on. And the simple fact is that it's gonna have to be made taller. So I figure it needs to come up at least six inches to make sure that whoever's working has room to move around in there. But if I go up a solid foot, that'll give me enough space that maybe in certain areas I can do some overhead storage type stuff. And that's the plan. Now I realize that's gonna make that trailer look really weird considering it's probably gonna get hauled with a mini truck. So, but I'll take functionality over cosmetics. And quite honestly, by the time we get some graphics on it and get it all finished up and prettied up, it, ain't nobody really gonna pay attention to the shape of the trailer, hopefully. We'll see. And 
And that's where... Son of a gun. Yep, I can see that. Every one of these is stripped up. All right, so this trailer was built by Cargo South, and apparently they had two different people installing the rail. I'm assuming that the guy on this side was the veteran because he drove the screws in, had no problem getting them out. He made it all the way around to this corner, which is where the new guy coming from that end up this way felt the need to overdrive these screws and strip the heads out of every single one of them. in case you missed what happened right there this is an industry standard screw for cargo trailers manufactured everywhere the head looks a lot like a torx bit but i promise you count the splines you'll never get a torx bit to fit in it but a number two square head similar to the industry standard screw head in a mobile home will fit in that screw shove it in your impact driver and take your screws out. Unless the person that installed it stripped out the head. At which point, grab your grinder, throw a cutoff wheel on it, cut a slot, then take a wide flat tip blade, shove that in your impact driver and pull that screw out. And most of the time that'll work. Most of the time. So now that the roof is disconnected, the plan is to come in at each one of these studs, come down about three inches, this is an inch and a quarter, come down about three inches, mark these, cut each and every one of them off. Now that leaves us with two problem areas, one of which is the back door. Now first and foremost, you see that spring right there? You treat that like the Wu-Tang Clan, it ain't nothing to... The other problem area is going to be up here in the front. These pieces of metal are obviously curved like that. So we're going to have to leave this one at the top connected to the top. So it's got to go up, but that's going to make an extra foot of length in this area right here. So we're going to have to find a way to deal with that, but that's sort of a hindsight uh, issue. We'll figure it out and we'll go from there. For now, we just got to get all these marked and cut. And once they're all cut, we'll be able to jack this thing up a foot and weld some metal in to replace that. All right, before we start cutting all these studs, let's take into consideration it is quite possible that once this roof section is cut loose from these walls, these side walls may just want to flop down and fall down and then we're all kind of messed up. So the idea is we're going to take a couple of pieces of uh, angle iron, take these screws that was previously holding the plywood on the wall, and then run a piece of angle iron down the studs, screw them together, do an X brace, keep those walls in position while we lift that roof up. Had to go get my safety glasses. You know, for safety.
last thing we want to do is cut all these studs, get everything cut loose and the roof separate from the wall, and then try to pick it up and it just fall over. So we're going to cut one stud near each corner. Go ahead and weld our extension metal in place on one end, obviously a top end because it's got to slide up to keep it from getting all wobbly whenever we lift it up, weld it in. That's good enough for temporary. Just in case you don't know it, your knuckle is not the proper spot to touch your cutoff wheel with. It's not even bleeding. I've hurt myself so many times on this project, I'm, I think I might be out of blood. which means we're going to have to fill this area in just like we're going to have to do everywhere else. But in the process of figuring out what I was going to do here, I realized Wu-Tang here still has to be dealt with because the cable needs to go down to the door and with the new door jam in the way, either we're going to have to relocate the, the Wu-Tang or we're going to have to put a pulley on it and extend the cables, something. But we're gonna deal with that later in life. For now, let's create our new door jam. <laughs> All right, 
right, so we got this lifted up 10 inches. We got to fill this space, but we also got to cover these spots where I cut all the way through the outside metal. Now, once upon a time, several years ago, I priced some metal like that. And a few years ago, and we all know what prices are doing now, but a few years ago at the local trailer supply place, this metal ran like $80 a sheet. We can't afford to do that. So rather than replacing the whole siding, we're just going to fill that gap. Now, even at $80 a sheet, that's a little bit out of our budget. So there's a compromise. Sort of locally, the roofing metal companies that operate, all of them are within an hour of me. Uh, they crimp, they, they get their metal in on a big roll and they run it through a machine and crimp it and make roofing metal out of it. And most of them offer it in two different sizes, which is 26 gauge and 29 gauge. And the 29 gauge being the smaller, that's what we went with because it's a lighter weight. It is metal, it's not aluminum, whereas this is aluminum. That's your difference in your pricing. So, because they get that metal in on a flat sheet and crimp it themselves, you can purchase it uncrimped. All they gotta do is cut it, sell it to you. They'll be more than happy to do that. They're not gonna give you any discount on it, but, you can get flat sheet metal, 29 gauge or 26 gauge. One side of it can be colored, the other side will be an off-white. Hey, that's pretty convenient.
got the spring assist pulled out of the trailer and we got some brackets made so that we can relocate the spring assist and bring it further back down where it needs to be I should have done a dedicated video to the whole relocation of this thing but I didn't bother recording the taking it down so it wouldn't be a complete video so you're stuck with this on this video point out that this is not exactly like a garage door spring a torsion style garage door spring but it's very similar very similar so for somebody like Johnny Garage Johnson who does this all the time it's not that big a deal of course he's got years of experience dealing with torsion springs so for somebody like myself who does not have any experience on this topic these have the potential to be extremely dangerous so you got to pay attention to what you're doing and how you're doing it and you probably don't need to be trying to have a conversation on youtube while you're doing it of course some of us can't really be taught real quickly The one thing that you need to keep in mind when you start to work on this, you don't do a daggum thing to this thing if it's got tension on it. The tension has to be released before you start touching this. Now, I don't know the proper way to get this on. I had an idea, but then after paying attention and studying this for a little while, I realized that this torsion spring has a little bit of tension on it right now because of where the manufacturer of the trailer placed the hinges or the, the mount points rather. So if I were to loosen this, it's gonna shoot that way at least three quarter of an inch to an inch and that's more than it needs to be. So, I got a plan, and I'm going to let the camera run just in case the coroner needs to figure out exactly what happened. He won't have to guess. I am 99.99% .99 sure this is not the right way to do this. But that's the way we're going to do it. This needs to have some amount of tension on it. To keep the cable from coming loose. So, now, we got to figure out how to do the other side. Because you can't roll that one back. Actually, the other side can be disconnected because the tension is on this end. But we're not going to.
All right, so we got our plywood back in. Of course, we got a gap up there because there was only that much plywood to begin with. Not unhappy with that. Looks great from the back. Come down the side, it looks okay. There's a small amount of gap in areas like this that is that are this between the studs but maybe by the time we get some get a wrap on it that'll probably work out okay not happy with this area right here but overall this will work out well That's a big difference from what it used to look like, that's for sure.